um, picture like lace shaping with an embroidery machine. You know how you do insertion lace? Well, <coughs> excuse me, what that kind of entails is you have your base fabric, right? And we'll pretend like the yellow is our base fabric. And you want to insert lace into something. Well, probably the easiest way to do this and use that Australian window pane technique would be to, you know, just like look at basic simple shapes, right? So we're going to use our grid and I'm going to use this little running stitch line and I'm just going to create a diamond. I'll start here and place a left click and then count over one, two, three, four, five, right? So there's five, maybe six. We'll count over six. And then, you know, come down here. How many are you, you know, up here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven up, right? So, so there's, you know, my seven. And then the same thing here. And we have, like, this nice little diamond shape, right? Except I must not know how to count, I'm telling you. It's been one of those weeks. I think I'm off all the way across here, huh? go over one more. Yep. And I think I just saw Barbara leave and let's see if she comes back in. Okay. So there we go. Oh, okay. They, it just finally kind of logged her out. So we'll, hopefully she can get back in here. Okay. So there is one line, right? And we're going to do Australian window pane and then we're going to do um, a little lace insertion. So here's my triangle. And I'm going to just duplicate this. All right, so now I've got two triangles. And I'm going to hold my shift key. And I'm going to shrink this down a little bit. And I'll try to stay on the grid so I can kind of see where I am. Okay, so there we are, right? Okay, this one is going to be my Australian window pane. So I'm going to stitch that and then, you know, go ahead and um, you can put the fabric in the back if you want, or you can stitch on top, and then it'd be kind of tough. It, you're better off if you put the back fabric underneath and then cut out on top. So I'm going to put this up here at the top, and I'm going <coughs> to change this to blue, okay? So this is our, let's stitch it together, and then we're going to, you know, trim that around. So in this case, since it's big enough, I'm going to copy, paste, and I'll shrink it just a tiny bit so that we have that little safety line, right? So now I'm going to cut this section out, right? And I'm going to have the organza behind it. So there's one thing. This is going to be my fabric right here, right? The blue. Oh, no, 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 the outer one. The blue is where we're going to put the little organza behind it. Right. And, and we can do anything we want on this, too. The organza can hold some stitches, so, you know, we can get real heirloomy here if we want. So right now we've done this, you know, I'm going to, um, I'll leave the red line there, but right now we've got our center section, which is going to be cut out for the Australian window pane. It's going to have the nice shiny little fabric behind it. And I want to do right. something real cutesy and heirloomy around this. So, you know, I might get really brave and say, you know what, I think I'm going to go ahead and do a satin stitch and I'm going to hit B boy on the keyboard and zoom in and there's Barbara. Hey Barbara, can you hear us? Yeah, I'm back. Okay, I good. can. Okay, good. So now, you know, we're, we're working on this center section is going to be our Australian window pane and since it's bigger I made, you know, that double line so we have a little safety here, right? And we're going to cut the fabric out inside here. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to cover this now but I'm going to get a little creative because it's heirloom stuff. So, I want to, I selected the satin stitch, you know, not, not the weave. I made sure it said satin. I hit the fly out arrow and selected satin. So I'm going to start here. Mm -hmm. um, we'll go ahead and pull it down a little bit. I'm going to left click and left click real close. It might be hard to see. Hold on, let me back say. So we'll start over here so you can see. I'm going to left click here maybe right dead center because we can cover that up with something else. So I'm left click, left click, right. 
I'm going to come up to about here, right click, right click. Uh, let me see, let's do it. I want it kind of little and dainty, so right click, right click. And then back down to about the middle, left click, left click. And then hit enter. Okay, so there's a nice little scallop, right? Now you can always adjust this if you don't like it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to select that. Make sure I know where my in and out points are. In and out, right? And you could punch this whole line if you want to, but, you know, I'm kind of lazy, so I'm just going to copy, paste, slide it over, and line it up visually. And I can always use my arrows to fine tune, right? And then I'll just select this. And I think I need one more. Okay, so now I've got these scallops all done, and I'm a little bit longer than I should be. And, you know, so I'm going to select all of these scallops. Okay. And I'm going to shrink them down a little bit so that they fit where I want them to fit. Okay, see, I want to make sure that they all fit in there, right? And... I'm going to take my finger off the shift key and pull this up a little bit because I can do it on the corners and drag it and get it to fit in where I want it to fit in. Okay, so I know that I start up here and they all run together, right? So I've got this set and I'm mm -hmm. going to make this set a nice little kind of salmon pink. Okay, so not too bad so far, right? Then I'm going to, you know, select this. You know, they're all selected, see? And I'm going to group uh -huh. these in sections. I'm going to group this, and then I'm going to duplicate this. Okay, so there's my second duplicated group. I'm going to use the rotate, or actually I could use the flip here. Whoops, let me undo. I could use the flip option, right, and flip that around and just bring this over like this. Right? Or, I could do this all at one time, and I could select this, and we have this neat little array tool, so I'm going to zoom out, let me see if the array tool will do what I want it to do. Okay, I've selected this, and see these tools right here, mine are probably in a different spot, but see this tool? It's called a corner tool. So if I copy this and mirror to the corners, if I click on that button, see what it does? Isn't that cool? And if I think that that's going to line up correctly, I just hit enter. Yes. And there you go. Do that again. Do it again. How you got it to go all the way around. Okay, once I get, since this is symmetrical, right? Right. And, you know, we, we were pretty even on our grid. We did pretty good. And we were pretty even about lining these up. You know, you might want to double check and make sure these are lined up correctly. But we're going to cover it up anyway. So, But I've got this. And I grouped these all together. I made them all grouped together because it's okay. one run. And then okay. I went up and I got this tool. See this tool up here? Can you guys see what tool I'm referring to? Yeah. Right here. Look for that Maybe. icon on your screen. See my little see my yeah. little highlight button? No. Yep. Can you see the highlight marker all over the screen now? Cat or Nancy? Okay. Yes, now I see it. Yes. Okay, see, see this icon? That is duplicating. That is, it's called um, copy and paste to corners, I believe is the official name. We'll okay. see when we mouse over it. Okay. Basically what it does is it takes this and mirrors it around on all four corners. And it depends on where this is as to what it does. Okay, so with that selected, I'm going to click on that icon, and it gives me a preview, right? So if I like the preview, I say, okay, good, and I press enter. And there you go. And that leaves you all your, now where's all your color? See? Can you see all of these pieces I love now? It. Can, and, we, can you get this to us tonight? Um, it, it takes time to download from the Internet. 
Um, so I'm probably. You, oh. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, you know, how long will this take? Okay, so I've got that taken care of, and that's, you know, a nice little roughly edge there. And if I wanted to, I can put little flowers up here. And, you know, and I, I, you know, I want to. So I'm going to go ahead and, and I'll use the embroidery gallery. I can always make my own, you know, but I'm thinking we'll just use embroidery gallery for right now. And you know, find something that we like, because the neat thing about the embroidery gallery pieces are, I can edit these too. So I'm going to go ahead and pick, let me see what this one does. I don't know if this one's satin filled or not. Nope, it's just a run. Hold on, let me get rid of that. I, I was thinking that one might be satin filled, but I'll just kind of grab one real quick and we'll, you know, we'll deal with it. that one is okay so this one is satin filled okay see so I've got this nice little flower right here and I don't want all of that stuff maybe I just want one of these little flowers so I just edit ungroup you know come in here and start dragging around the pieces I don't want and deleting them see so here's my little flower and we'll make my little flower turquoise so we can see it You know, so I can do anything I want. I can put flowers up here, okay, because this piece right now is fabric, right? And yeah. maybe I want to do flowers there, and since I can resequence everything, I'm just going to kind of, ah, you know what? Uh, this is the perfect thing to show you what this does. Hold on, ready? Okay, the corner tool. I can use this corner tool again. Here's my flower. If I come up here and use that corner tool again, see what it does because they're placed on the center lines? Do you see where my, my outline is? I'm going to have four flowers, mm -hmm. but because it's right. placed on the center, it doesn't understand which side I want these to be on. It, it bases it everything on this axis, okay? So I'm going to escape because that won't give me what I want, but if I would happen to move this flower over a tiny bit and click on that, See what I get instead? Is this, you know, understanding how this tool works? Like, you know, it's got, it's going to mirror it based on the center lines and where these are placed. Okay? If I take this and put it up here, or, you know what, let me put it over here. Watch what happens. See how it's, how the mirror function works? Mm -hmm. Okay, is that making a little more sense? So I can't really use the mirror function here, but I can use the icon next to it. Copy to circle. See this icon right here? You guys see that icon next to it? Mm -hmm. Where are you? Yes. Okay, if I click on that, yeah. I can copy to circle. And the only thing is I don't always get what I want. Like I would have to move these guys, right? These two are fine, mm -hmm. but, you know, or if I wanted to go, you know, like totally crazy, see this little icon and the number next to it? Right now I'm on four. Here's five, okay. six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You can just keep going. And, okay, see my nice little floral circle? See? I wouldn't quite Bernie. want to do that, but, you know, just pointing that out. I don't so, know why you just don't live next door to me. <laughs> All right, well, you know, okay, so this is going to be my best option. Edit, duplicate, drag it. That's going to be my best option, right? Yes. And, you know, I can just see Control-C, Control-V, you know, and just move these around. That's my best option to get these where I want them to be. Okay, so there's my cute little flowers. And, yeah, I can do anything I want. I can do a little flashy design here, you know. Um, I still have to kind of finish the inside of this as well. But, you know, we got our little design in there. And, you know, to finish the inside of this, I would make sure these were adjusted so that they were a little better lined up and maybe were a little more arky. You know what I mean? Like had a little more arc to them. 
and truly just okay. come in here and use you know the steel stitch or use the line tool and there is my back stitch and there is my stem stitch we haven't looked at the back stitch line but here's what the back stitch line does I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go back stitching here and I'll show you what options you have here versus the, st the stem stitch and since this is a line we can always just change this line to anything we want it to be okay so I'm going to select and go in and right now we're on back stitch there's my stitch length 2.0 stitch thickness 2.5 see what that does it shifts it a little bit right overlap 70 percent okay overlap 50 percent okay see how this is doing it doing this it's going to give you a mm -hmm. heavier line it's not necessarily going to cover anything but you know you have some options on this that keeps them closer together this separates them a little bit here's my you know sculpture line this is not going to do what I want either this line is really set up to do like um, you know hand quilt hand stitch or hand quilted kind of look and here's my candlewick line here's my motif line I have all these options and then I still you know of course the stem stitch line I like this for heirloom stuff because it's light and it's you know kind of breezy and I can control the settings I can also come in here and I can say you know I really want this line thickness to be like three And there you go and I'll change I'll change this to blue so you can see it so that's gonna you know that'll be a nice little stitch to cover you can still use a zigzag or you could use a motif stitch if you liked Barbara you still with us no nope, Barbara got bounced again Do you have any questions at all Shirley um no okay now it's, it's very pretty yeah it's uh, fun it's fun like it's very dainty and it doesn't you can make this in wild colors too if you want you know um it's just kind of a fun quick little thing now don't rule out using some of the motifs you know it takes a little while sometimes to find one that you really like but or you know of course you know you guys all know how to make your own right? right so this stitch this stitch is kind of interesting let me find it uh, come back this one you know this is like a, a classic kind of you know motif too and I can make this wider than six if I want but that's going to give a neat little stitch as well see yes it does and all I need to do is cover those edges so you know if you look at some of these motifs they're hard to tell what they're gonna do based on the preview sometimes there was another one that I always find kinda of fun to play with these are heavier right these are gonna be heavier designs some of them are a little bit bigger this is neat but it has a lot of little curved stitches in it and anything that looks like this is going to be um, it's going to have you know the satin stitching to it okay like to give you an idea of what that looks like and how big it is see yes no that's a lot much yeah <laughs> just a tad <laughs> yeah and you know because it's a satin stitch it's really not built to scale down a lot this stitch um, number 25 is kind of interesting um, it's at four right now you know maybe I want to make this like six and then make this spacing you know maybe 3.5 and it can become a very interesting little stitch Miss Nancy, are you back yet? 
Hi, Emma just did arrive back. We're playing have with... have to go to the lady room. Yeah, we're, we're playing with the motifs. And, uh, you know what, let me select that. Sometimes the controls kind of take over my screens. So I can't always quite get to where I need. Okay, here we go. We're playing with these motifs. And, you know, when you go into here, it's always easier to me. I never remember what the numbers are. But even this one can be kind of interesting. See? Which one is it that you selected? Um, I selected um, shape 25. 35 was oh, one of 35. them. And then there's 25 that we selected. But, you know, don't rule out some of these stitches because they look... Like we were playing with this one. This one I just find to be a very pretty little stitch. And doesn't that just Which look so heirloom? It's um it is motif thirty five. Let me see if Barbara's back. Oh there it is. That's pretty. So, you know, you have to kind of play with these a little bit to see what they might do. Uh-huh. Okay, this is gonna be kind of big at ten. But, you know, at six, it might look pretty cool, right? Even if you have a little space between it, you know, that's kind of an interesting little stitch, too. Yes. You know, like putting ribbon in or something, right? So play with these motifs and don't rule these out as, you know, an, an applique um, cover stitch. Now, for fills, when you're looking at some of these stitches like this, when I see like this little line underneath it, I know for sure that it is a satin fill. And they're usually large, like this is 19. Okay? That would not be a good one to use for something small like this. But, think in terms of, let me go back to that one I really, really like, which is, this one. Okay, so, but in terms of those bigger motifs, you can get to them from the embroidery gallery, right? And the embroidery gallery is kind of neat. Like, when you're scrolling through these, you know, this this is going to be satiny. That's run, I believe. But, you know, look at, here's a little bow, right? Picture putting, you know, like little bows in here and see where this point is. The minute I left click, I place that anchor and I rotate and I can put this into position. Left click where I want that and rotate. And this will keep going until I hit escape to stop. So I could, you know, continue to do this or I can hit escape. And I can come in and I can select these two pieces that I added and resize them however I want to resize them, right? And then use that corner tool and put the bows all the way around them. Barbara, are you back? Oh, you guys still there? I'm back. I, I don't right. know for how long. <laughs> Yeah, I just lost the program, so let me go into the program again. It just gave me this access violation, which I've never had before. So let's go back into the program. You guys get to see my desktop. I'll have to see if I can edit that out of the video. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it, it scrolls. Like, it goes through different images every hour or something to that effect, and some of them are kind of interesting. But Windows 8, you can sync every Windows 8 computer that you have, right? So that they all yeah. match up and they mm -hmm. all have the same um, desktop. So if I ha change my desktop here, then, you know, I can torture my son and connect his computer. There we go. Okay, at least it didn't get rid of it. Okay, so um, let me move this over. What I was trying to do was get to colors. So, you know, you could do just about anything you wanted with, you know, the motifs of the lines as far as, like, heirloom is concerned. Okay, so 
now that we've, we've kind of played with the different stitches, this is our Australian window pane. So we have cut this fabric out and we've covered it up and we put these little dainty stitches in. And this is a piece of fabric, right? This line is here because we want to insert lace. So we're going to, you know, click on this line, which is a placement line. We're going to copy and paste it. And we're going to hold the shift key and just drag it out so that it, it proportionally drags out, okay? Now, if I wanted to get really fancy, what I can do is I have these, you know, placement lines. I can, you know, cut this fabric and leave my backing behind it. And then I can lay the lace in using, you know, basically these two lines. Okay, let me select these. No, didn't want to do that. Hold on. Okay, so now I've got these at the bottom. So here's those two lines, right? So placement. Mm -hmm. and then you're going to kind of treat it like a regular applique only... You know, you're going to cut these from behind, maybe, very carefully. Or you can cut the fabric out on top between these placement lines, sorry. And then place the lace on top and let it, ta you know, tack this down. So you've got the lace, and what you'd have to watch is these corners, right? So you would want to start the lace maybe mm -hmm. here. And then you'd have to, you know, decide how to miter your corners down. Or, if you want to get really adventurous, you could just make your own kind of Richelieu lace in between here. And so you've got this open work here. You've got a piece of fabric that remains here. And you're going to get really brave and make your own Richelieu things. And to do that, I'd probably do, I would probably make my framework here with triple running stitches, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to kind of zigzag this. I'm not going to be real detailed, but you can do just about anything you want here. Okay, so, all right, so there's my poorly designed line. So I've got my line, right? Um, select that line, mm -hmm. backtrack on it, and then you've got, you know, this main line, you've got the backtrack line, right? Copy, paste, mm -hmm. and I would extend these down a little bit, but copy and paste, so we've got three lines. Here's my, you know, the two lines I did, and this is going to be kind of like my cover. And I've already cut this away very carefully and left the backing, right? So we'll change this to blue so you can see it. Mm -hmm. And then just go in and say, you know what, make that a satin line. Sorry, satin line. Um, underlay. You might want to do the zigzag, okay? The center run and zigzag. Center run's probably overkill. <laughs> you know, the zigzag would be good. A double zigzag might be a little bit better. Stitch length. 12.7 millimeters, a little bit long. Um, we can leave that alone for right now. Line stitch, satin stitch width, I could probably go 1.5, 2 probably would be fine. I don't need this ultra thick. I just need it to hold together, so maybe somewhere between 95 to 100%. And now I've got a nice little Richelieu line there, right? And you can do this any way you want. You can be very neat. Come down here, go across, come up, you know. And then you're going to, you know, of course, satin stitch these down. So you have to make sure those are pulled out enough. Does that make sense? Or if you want to get really daring, you could do this. Um, I'm going to just select this. I'm going to put, you know what, we'll do even better. We'll use this one. Control C, Control V. I'm going to change that to blue so I can see it. And I'm going to go up and I'm going to use the motif that we made way, way, way are back. You You're in Connecticut. No, Ohio. Ohio. Uh huh. 
So I'm going to go into my moti. So remember that little, you know, we did the, uh, where's our little entredeaux? Remember that entredeaux stitch we did? There we go. There's one of them. That might not be the right one. I think that's the one. But, you know, there's that little X one that we, remember the X entredeaux that we did? Uh -huh. Why not do something like this? All I have to do is resize it and make sure it fits, right? And, okay, so we know we have to make some adjustments. So we come in here and let's make this like 15 and try to make this one 10 and see how that overlaps. Because this, this one I think I had to make some serious adjustments on. Other than making some adjustments, that's kind of neat, right? Uh -huh. Make my own lace. Or... You know, I could go in and I could use my entredeau. I just have to remember which one it was. I'm just going to grab, uh, oh wait, no, the entredeau was this one. Okay. And I have to make sure it's the right Didn't size. So I think probably 15 and 15, right? Or maybe 15 and 10. You made one. Yeah, I just have to adjust that. I'm trying to remember how I adjusted that. Okay. That's not... I'd have to make sure I had, I knew what to do with this because I've got those pieces kind of hanging out. But to give you an idea of what this would look like. Well, that's a little bit big, but you guys get the gist, right? Yes. Let's see if 10 will do it. So, you know, there's a lot of things I can do here to make those strong attachments between, you know, the piece of, you know, like a fabric that I, I removed. You could leave your hands underneath and just cut away that top layer. You could put lace on top. You could make your own Richelieu. You know, you can do a million things with this. So what you would have would be, you know, I would I would probably make a new motif because that's going to be too wide. But you have your open organza here. You have a nice cut work type of effect here, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, so you have a nice little heirloom <coughs> motif basically um, ready to roll. You guys have any questions? That's beautiful. Barbara, any okay. questions? No, I'm not sure I can do this. You can do it. Oh, just break I it. wish I could. Just break it down into pieces, okay? <laughs> Start with just the center, okay? And, you know, if you look right. at what, what we had for the center... You know, it's it's an applique. That's all it is. You know, there's my placement, and, and, you know, I put the organs underneath. So all I had to do was stitch this placement line and then cut out the top layer, right? Would you, would you use a okay. stabilizer, right. stabilizer when you're doing this? Yeah, I would use, yeah. if you're going to put organza underneath, you need something that's either going to tear away or wash away mm -hmm. and if I do wash away and if I'm going to do a lot of stitches I have no problems layering two or three layers of violin on top and on, on, the, on, the, on the bottom, bottom. <laughs> on the bottom and if I feel like things are getting a little shifty right like after you cut this center section out there's nothing wrong with slapping a layer of violin on top either it's going to wash away you might not be able to see your right. fabric underneath, you know, but who cares? Once you cut out that center piece, all you want is stability. That's what you want. What is filing? Um, it is, it's a wash away backing that is, it, you know how you have the clear wash away? Um, yeah. The trade name for <laughs> it is called Vileen. And it is like this white kind of woven backing that washes away like if you sneeze on it it starts to disintegrate 
but it's more sturdy and it can handle like satin stitches where the clear um, poppers can't. Those clear, you know, wash ways can't. Um, uh -huh. it's, there's a million names for it. There's like wet and gone, I think. Oh, okay. Now, a double check on that. Wet and gone might be a little bit different, but um, Vileen, Aqua Magic, you know, it, and, you know, if you ask your, your dealer for a wash away, you know, like Vileen, or Aqua Magic, they'll know exactly what you're talking about, no matter what the name of, of the brand they carry is. Okay. And uh, that stuff is, I, I almost never use the clear wash away anymore. I have some still, but it doesn't get funky. Like if you have clear wash, you know, clear wash away and it sits out in the sun, it gets kind of melty and funky, you know. Mm -hmm. Where violin, it doesn't care. As long as it's not wet, it's all good. Okay. So, when you're doing this, right, start with the basics, mm -hmm. okay? Start with just one piece of it and build, okay? Like, once you get, you know, this done, however you want. Like, you don't have to use bows. Use something else. Make your own design if you want. You, you know, you could even use just running stitches there, you know, or nothing at all, right? Start with mm -hmm. right. this center section. And if, if all you get done is the center section, then great. And then move on, you know, to the next section when you're comfortable, right? Then just send it to us, baby mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll send you that flower picture, too, <laughs> you know, the, just in case it'll be uploaded. Um, but, you know, this is nothing more than a, you know, a diamond shape. You could do this with the heart, you know. I'm going to try and I'm gonna try. Okay, just remember, you know, there's no wrong way to do this. Truly, you're just learning to play with the stitches and, and experiment. But these oh. tools up here, this little copy and mirror, and then this little floral thing, I just love those things mm -hmm. because, you know, you've got these motifs or you've got the motifs that, that you've made as well, right? Um, all you have to have is a piece of something mm -hmm. in the program. Um, you know, I'm going to pick like, I'll pick one of these bigger ones, okay? This is a pretty big, you know, file. Okay, there's one, one little piece, right? Picture this, mm -hmm. you know, rotate it however you want. Remember, you can tear these apart, too, so if you, you know, if you don't want that whole big thing, you can tear it apart, but, okay, so you have this, right? Yeah. If you play with this tool, mm -hmm. see what it does? It made four of them, right? Well, what if I want, like, a wreath? Hmm. Okay. Oh, Bernie. And that's just with, like, something that was built into the program. The corner... The corner, you know, mirror and rotate tool. I'm going to kind of line this up a little bit more. Okay, if I have this and then, you know, maybe I come over here and I say, uh, you know, really, I, I want to add that. And then I want to oh. have something else in between here. Let me find one of those bigger scrolly ones. Um, this. Okay, and I'm going to shrink this one down a little bit and, you know, rotate that around, right? You know, if I want to have something that's even, you know, like bigger like this, right? Are you there? Yeah, can you still see us? I, can, I couldn't hear you for mm -hmm. a minute. Okay, so here's my, my three pieces because I'm making this little border for myself, right? I'm not even going to worry about in and out points at this point. I'm just going to get my pattern. Okay, now I made, you know, this scallopy border by doing it this way, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, here's this right. border now. I've, I've spaced it as evenly as I can here. And I'm going to say, you know, corner me. 
There you go. <clears throat> right? So you can come up with some very elegant designs just using, you know, what's in the program or some basic little motifs that you've made um, or making one little section of something and then, you know, using these tools to mirror it around. Now, can you adjust those so they are come in closer or, or they're kind of stuck to where they are? Um, I can move those anywhere I want, but if I want to make sure that they all kind of move, you know, if they want to be a little bit closer. Oh, my mouse is getting flaky. Hold on. I would come over here uh -huh. and select it. And wherever I position this is going to kind of control where the automatic positioning is. See? Okay. So I see. You know, I mean, right when you, when you look at this, it's just quick, and it, you know, if you're playing with this, just get comfortable with these tools. Don't be afraid to try something. If it doesn't work out, just don't sew it out, right? Oh. Mm -hmm. But you know, like even like if I don't like these bows in here, I can get rid of these bows, right? I don't need necessarily to right. have bows in there. I just put them in there. You know, um, let me move that in a little bit closer. To me, it's easier to just get rid of this and adjust and reset it. Okay, so there's one section. Mm -hmm. I'll just drag. If I hold my control key, by the way, I can go and I can left-click on multiple things. Okay, so, you know, now I've got this blue section, right? I just have to click on the blue icon mm -hmm. or color chip, move them down where I want it to be. And, you know, I can position those anywhere I want. Like maybe instead of green flowers, you know, I might want like some pink flowers here. You know, um, mm -hmm. you know, pick what colors you want. That looks like a brand new baby. <laughs> <laughs> trying to remember what <laughs> color I used on that one blue. I don't think it was that one. This one maybe. I don't know. Anyway, on the, I guess it must be. What yep, there it is. Which is that that you just changed? Um, and that is a motif is that, line. That's, what stitch is that that you just changed, that blue one? This one right here is a motif line, and it is motif 35. We were playing with the motifs when you kind of got booted out, right? We were. I said, don't ever kind of yeah. not look at some of these motifs because, you know, they have some very interesting looks to them, right? It's, it's hard to tell what they're going to really look like. Yeah just based on this, right? Even that's kind of cool when you look at that, right? Right. See? So, you know, play with the motifs. And, and you know, what we yeah. did was, if you really look, I'm going to kind of drag that line out of here. This is my placement for this piece that I'm going to cut out with the organza behind it, right? So you've got this very elegant, lacy design, and then you've got this open window pane here. Okay. So it just makes it, you know, picture picture this on like a baptismal gown, right? Other than having to have the colors different for, um, you know, your appliques, you have the machine stop. You know, picture this on a baptismal gown like that. You know, on the hem of a, a baptismal gown, wouldn't that be pretty? Or the back of a baby bonnet. Right. Or, yeah, that, you know, would that would be pretty. Right. Or, you know, the hem of a shirt. Like, you know, put her gans on the bottom of a shirt if you need to lengthen it. Or if, it, if maybe, you know, the hem's a little, you know, not quite what you want. Or you want to fashion, you know, fashion this up a little bit. Why not? do a whole bunch of these across, a, uh, you know, a couple pieces of organza and, you know, put like a pink piece in here, like a, or, you know, whatever color you want in here, white organza maybe, and hold on, let me make a little section in pink here, 
and then maybe some pink organs underneath here, right? So when you cut that top layer away, you mm -hmm. have, you know, the pink underneath. Or mm -hmm. if you make, you know, think in terms of like shadow work embroidery, you don't have to cut anything away at all. Maybe you put, um, you know, like a pink underneath here or pink silk or pink satin or something, and what you end up with is a very muted pink color, right? <clears throat> if you leave that original organza on top. Mm -hmm. You know, see, you don't have to cut anything away. You can always do, like, reverse applique and, you know, use the window, Aust Australian window paint technique, or just layer it and have that nice little, you, you know, almost like shadow work, that pop of color underneath, right? And they make organza now in a bazillion colors, dark, light, you know. So, you know, layer them in the store and you can see what that's going to look like underneath. So you can make something very nice and dainty. And, you know, why not take, you know, something, if you're going to do it that way, why not take, you know, this flower is kind of iffy, but, you know, why not take something and, you know, put a, a nice little center motif in here or something, right? Mm-hmm. You know, if you're going to... Um, right on top of the organza. Right. So you could even, you know, if you wanted to, you could even do, you know, the organza is pretty stable, right? An initial. You could put your initial in here. Initial. That, that might be, you would have to make sure you had enough backing, um, you know, or a couple layers of organza there to support this, right? Or why mm -hmm. not do something like you know, very dainty, come in and, you know, do a motif fill. And I'm just going to use the default flower, right? And put that, you know, right on top. Or, you know, that one has a lot of stitches in it basically because of the curves on it. Remember I told you anything that's got a curve? Um, but mm -hmm. you can always come in here and resize it. You can use the layout option. Remember I told you about the layout option? And you can pull these apart, and you can resize them from here, and you can make these motif fills look completely different than what they originally looked like. See? So, you know, play with these settings and get comfortable. These motifs are kind of neat, okay? But besides just embroidery gallery on a motif fill, I can come in and I can select embroidery gallery. I can go to any motif I made. I can go to the black work. I can go to, remember the wing needles we've been working on? You can go to the wing needle designs. But uh -huh. the black work, you know, don't, don't ignore these either. Some of these are very pretty. Okay. You know, so play with this and just, mm -hmm. you know, if that's maybe more than what you, more stitches than what you want, you know, then just select a different design. There's a million different things that you can select from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's a lot of different files in here. You could even, you know, make a black work line across it or something. Um, this one's kind of pretty, right? You know, the layout, if you see what the layout looks like, even laid out regularly, it's kind of pretty. But remember, you can always alter this, right? Uh -huh. See? So, you know, experiment with the tools in the program. And, you know, really all you need to come up with is a basic shape. You know, play with the different fills play with the different line types, and treat this like a reverse applique. The only difference is you're planning on putting organza in there. That's it. And then once you get this done, then maybe branch out and think, oh, hey, I'd like to cut out this and, you know, slap another piece of organza in there or put some entredeau in this, right? I, you don't have to make big entredeau. Make little mm -hmm. entredeau, you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, but, you know, this even by itself is fairly pretty. Picture this, you know, hold on me. Mm -hmm. Picture this going, 
like this. And just going across the bottom of something. Or down the middle of a nice springish or summerish um, linen tablecloth with those cutout sections with organza behind it. Ooh. You know, like a table runner? That'd be pretty. Uh huh. For a dining table. I mean, you can do anything you want with these. And even if you want to, like, separate these out like this, like, if, and by the way, so that you know, if you group these motifs together, right, like, if you group each one individually, mm -hmm. what I get are these two sections, and if I hold my control key, I can select them both, and I can align them with the aligning tools over here. So I know that my border's straight, but, you know, so you picture, picture you, you know, put some space between them, right? Why not put something in between? That's here? really pretty. Okay, so why not put something in between here? Um, you know, some kind of, of design that kind of stays with the theme of this, right? Or, mm -hmm. um, you know, we've done like, we've done, um, you know, like the eyelets and, and you know, the little things like that, right? Well, you know, sometimes simple is just, mm -hmm. you know, the most elegant. So why not just take little circles here and make little satin circles? And just space them across here, right? Right? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's cute. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, they can be a different color or, you know, they can be the same color, right? And we were using, like, that oyster color. There you go. Mm hmm You know, and those are a little bit big. I'd probably make them a little bit smaller. But, you know, sometimes, like, simple is really, truly, you know, the most elegant thing, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Less is more. Sometimes, yeah. right? <laughs> Love it. So, now these were all done with the basic things in the program, other than I made that scallop. And you guys already know how to do the scallop, right? You just come right. in and, you know, right. select your turning fill tool. And it is literally, even if you have to make the scallop off to the side, left click, you know, left click real close, right? Right click, right click. And you can always resize these, so make it big if you have to. Left click, left click. Oh, I guess I left click there. Hey, that's pretty cool, though, right? Yeah, that's kind of neat. Yeah. Reminds you of some of the Elna stitches. Okay, left click, left click. I forgot to right click is what I did. Right click, right click. I should have known by the sound. But, you know, so maybe I have to resize these, right? Um, no big deal. You know, you can select mm -hmm. it, come in and resize it, right? Left click on it again and rotate it to the position that you want. You know, like maybe you want this on your border instead. Or maybe you want both of them. Actually, both of them might look kind of sweet. You know? Hold on to me. Does not look yeah. pretty? <laughs> And, mm -hmm. you know, it's just playing with little shapes. That looks like something out of Star Trek. <laughs> it, it does kind of, but if you look, if I stretch this out, right, and cover two of them and shrink it down, like, height-wise, I can come up with some pretty heirloomy stuff. Right. There. Yeah. And, you know, but even like, um, hold on, let me undo, 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 because even if I do something like this, Okay? Like, I, I have this one piece. Mm -hmm. Okay, control C, control V, flip. That's kind of a fun little border, right? All I have to do is make sure these line up on the ends. It's cute. Mm -hmm. And I can always resize this a number of different ways. Okay. 
Wow. Mm hmm You know, I could even, if I really wanted to, I could even make my own rickrack. And, you know, think about this. Like, if you really think about rickrack, uh, I'm going to kind of start with left clicks over here just to control it. But, okay, you figure right click, right click, you know, right click, right click. I might want to do some left clicks in there. Ah, hold on. I might want to do a left click to, to make that a little more rickracky. Hold on. Okay, so maybe we want to do a right click inside and left click on the outside. And I'm not going to do this very perfect, but... And then a right click on the outside, left click on the... No. Left click on the outside, right click on the inside, maybe. <laughs> I'm trying to think in how to do Rick Racky stuff, right? Let's see how this looks. Uh, I probably have to do left clicks and maybe maybe do it around the curve. But, you know, you can make kind of your own trim. Think in terms of extending this around something. And I don't have to use a satin fill. You know, there are a bazillion different ways to use these fills in here. The contour fill, to me, is just fun. <laughs> right? Right. And the contour mm -hmm. fill allows you to really make some interesting effects. I think what I'd have to do is just sit and play. Yep, that's it. Just and sit not, and play. And not try to make anything until I got down there. <laughs> well, you know what happens is this. You know, if you sit and you play, and you practice, like, you know, the re-thing, what inevitably happens is you think, oh, hey, that looks pretty good. I wonder if I did this. And you end up with something like what we have on the screen, right? You're going to send us that, aren't you? Would you like me to save this file for you, Miss Nancy? Sure, so I can make one just like it and say, look what I did. <laughs> I can save it in the <laughs> Jeff format for you if you want. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Now I'll go ahead and I'll save it. Uh, <laughs> and I, I will include this with the image. How's that? All right. Now let me tell you one thing before you go. Okay. Baseball starts at 6 o'clock tomorrow night. Okay. And I believe you said we were going to start at 7.30. Yep tomorrow night. Now, if I can get it on the other computer, I'm okay. safe. You know but you can get I it on your iPad. No, I'm, Ashley said she didn't think I could. If you have a Wi-Fi connection, you can go to GoToMeeting and download that. But you're going to be at a baseball game, right? Yes. Okay, so you probably won't have Wi-Fi. Um... It's on ESPN3. Oh, you're but watching you know, it on TV. Okay. Yes. No, 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 no. I'm watching it on the computer. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. The okay. Computer, okay. The other computer is set up so that I can, I mean, I, this one is set up for me to get it on through uh, the North Carolina line. Okay. Um, if I can get it on the other computer, I'd be all right. I'll be okay. Okay. Well, you can, if you want to. to try to set up, you could sit there with your iPad and, you know, um, have your computer so you're watching the game, and then you could have your iPad and watch the webinar on the iPad. Judy Day does that. Yeah, Judy Day will do that. All right. Well, then I'll try it. You have to go to You the can multitask. Right. See, you're just way wired and connected now. We'll be able to hunt you down anywhere. Well, you know, I would not even be bothered <laughs> except that Denton is pitching tomorrow night. And no, I that's just, okay. I've got to watch him. Yeah, I think tomorrow we're doing the lace again. We're, cover we're covering, you know, we're lace on a base. We'll probably still do mostly lace on a base, but we'll start the standalone lace. We won't get through the standalone lace tomorrow. We'll just get it started. All right, then. So, all right, now I saved this file for you, Nancy, so you can go in and you can play with all these different fills, right? 
Thank you, precious. Okay, this is not in stitchable condition because, you know, I've got this copied and, you know, I would look and see, here's my fill, you know, I'm technically. Gonna my, I'm going to do my own. Okay, remember, gonna... it, you need to group and ungroup, right? But, you know, you can play with these and see what I did. You could, right. if you were leaving organza on top, um, well, no, I guess not. You still have to do these first. Okay? Because that's your placement for where you're going to cut. So, all right, ladies, you guys have any questions? No. I'm, I'm good. Okay, I'm, I'm going to stop the recording.